Striped bass are popular game fish that are pursued by U.S. anglers from coast to coast. Striped bass are a native species to many of Alabama's major rivers. The strain of striped bass that is native to the rivers that flow into the northern Gulf of Mexico is often referred to as the Gulf Coast striped bass. These fish are genetically different from those native to the Atlantic coast. Today, there are likely more stripers swimming in Alabama's waterways than ever before. This is no accident. The construction of many large hydroelectric dams and man-made reservoirs in the mainstream rivers of the Mobile Basin in the early and mid-1900s proved to be a blessing and a curse for striped bass. The blessing was the creation of many deep-water lakes with the cooler water sanctuaries and open-water habitats necessary for large adult stripers to thrive. The curse was the interruption of the continuous river flows that are necessary for the striped bass to successfully and consistently reproduce. By the early 1970s, researchers at state and federal fish hatcheries in the southeast developed new techniques that made it possible to produce large numbers of striped bass fingerlings. This made it practical to stock striped bass fingerlings in the region's large man-made reservoirs and lakes, creating many new recreational opportunities. By the early 1980s, Alabama's striped bass production program had hit full stride in Perry County at the Marion State Fish Hatchery. At about this same time, fisheries biologists recognized the genetic distinctiveness of the Gulf Coast striped bass. The state fisheries agencies of Georgia, Florida, and Alabama, along with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, entered into a cooperative agreement to conserve and restore populations of the native Gulf striped bass within the region. Lewis Smith Lake in north central Alabama was one of the lakes selected to preserve native Gulf Coast striped bass stocks for this regional restoration effort. Beginning in 1983, the Alabama Division of Wildlife and Freshwater Fisheries began annual stockings of striped bass fingerlings produced from verified Gulf Coast striped bass adults in order to establish and maintain a hatchery brood fish source for the cooperative restoration effort. To this day, Lewis Smith Lake remains a vital source for brood fish for hatchery production needed to support fingerling stocking needs in the southeast. Today, Adult striped bass broodfish are captured from Lewis Smith Lake in late March and early April, just prior to their natural spawn. Long lines baited with live goldfish or shad are deployed in strategic locations to catch candidate broodfish. Specially equipped boats are also used to electrically stun fish in the smaller tributaries that run into the lake. Division personnel carefully recover stunned or hooked fish from the water. These fish are immediately evaluated for potential hatchery use. Sex, size, and overall health are assessed, and fish deemed suitable for spawning are immediately moved to a waiting boat that transports them from the lake to a nearby hatchery transport truck. At Marion Hatchery, fish are weighed, tagged, and evaluated to determine the condition of the females. Prime females are injected with a hormone to stimulate the final development of their eggs. Normally, within 48 hours after injection, the females are ready to spawn. Once the females are injected with hormone, they are placed in a tank where they are continuously monitored. Periodically, hatchery personnel carefully net the female and check to see if she's ready to release her eggs. When it is determined the female is ready, three to five males are selected to provide the sperm needed to fertilize her eggs. The number of males is important because using multiple males ensures an increased genetic diversity in the offspring that are being produced. A 20-pound female can produce over a million eggs. Sperm from the males and a small amount of water is then mixed with the eggs using a turkey feather. Once all the eggs are obtained from the female and the sperm is mixed in, the eggs are carefully measured into waiting hatching jars. Each jar can handle about 75,000 eggs. Water flowing through the hatching jars keeps the eggs suspended and simulates the natural flow and turbulence of a flowing river. A screen on top of the jar prevents any eggs from prematurely washing out. 
The eggs are a light to dark green in color when they're first placed in the jar and then gradually darken in color as they near time to hatch. The incubation of the eggs takes approximately 48 hours from fertilization to hatch. Just prior to hatch, the jars containing fertilized eggs are moved into troughs that will receive the hatched fry. The screen is removed, and when the eggs hatch, the tiny fry swim to the surface and then flow out and over into the waiting trough. This is an important stage in the survival of the newly hatched fry. When first hatched, these tiny fish rely on an egg yolk for nutrition. This egg yolk will sustain the fry for up to six days. After that time, the fry must learn to eat or they will perish. Also at this stage, the individual fry must ingest a tiny gulp of air from the water's surface into their gut. This bubble of air is critical for the initial inflation of the swim bladder. Without a properly formed swim bladder, the young fish would not survive to adulthood. Personnel at the hatchery skim the surface of the water in the trough to remove any oil or film that accumulates. They also direct a fine spray of water onto the surface to break up any oil film. It is in this trough that young fry are introduced to their first real food. These tiny fish require zooplankton, nearly microscopic crustaceans, to survive. Brine shrimp larvae are cultured in a separate room within the hatchery and poured into the trough. The fry quickly begin to feed on the tiny shrimp and grow in size. Each trough can accommodate up to 300,000 fry. The fry will remain in these troughs for 7 to 10 days before they are moved to earthen rearing ponds where they will continue to feed and grow. Specially prepared ponds await the fry when they are ready to leave the hatchery troughs. These ponds must provide food for the next 30 days. To assure the pond is adequate, hatchery personnel apply fertilizers to promote a zooplankton bloom. This bloom is the growth of high densities of tiny food organisms that are suspended in the pond water and critical to the continued growth and survival of the young fish. After about 30 days, the fingerlings are ready to be stocked into the lakes and rivers of Alabama. By this time, they've grown to a size where they are capable of finding natural food and can better escape larger predators. The pond is drawn down and the fingerlings are netted and taken back into the hatchery building. Here, they're weighed, counted, and sorted for delivery to individual lakes and rivers. The fingerlings are then loaded into a hatchery truck and driven to the designated release site. This particular release of over 35,000 fingerlings was back into Lewis Smith Lake, where it all began. The young fish that survive will grow into the trophy fish that attract anglers to Smith Lake. For this year's efforts, over 3.6 million Gulf Stripe bass fry were hatched at Marion. Over 720,000 fingerling striped bass were released into Alabama's public fishing waters. In addition, over 1.5 million Gulf Stripe bass fry were provided to cooperating agencies for regional restoration efforts in neighboring states. The Alabama Division of Wildlife and Freshwater Fisheries Fish Hatchery Program is funded exclusively from a share of Alabama's hunting and fishing license revenues, which is then matched with federal funding provided by the Sport Fish Restoration Program. Sport Fish Restoration Funds are derived from a federal manufacturer's excise tax on fishing tackle, combined with a portion of the federal marine fuels tax.